Americans across the country have been organizing against the Trump administration's policy of forced family separations at the border. And we're now thankfully joined by Ai-jen Poo, director of the National Domestic Workers Alliance, who took part in one of these protests down in McAllen, Texas over the weekend. Welcome to the show, Ai-jen. Thanks for having me, John. Uh, so uh, we very much uh, appreciate you being able to give us uh, more direct information about what's happening there. We've been following it very closely for some time. So uh, what, what was the situation with this particular protest? Well, I just came back from McAllen, Texas, where there is a border processing center called, uh, called Ursula Border Processing Center, Border Patrol Processing Center. And hundreds of us gathered there on Sunday for Father's Day to hold vigil for the children who are separated from their fathers and mothers and all of the fathers who are without their children, wondering, not knowing where they are, where they will see them again. And I will tell you that I witnessed with my own eyes children being carted around in buses like prisoners. And actually a bus full of, an unmarked bus full of children drove by the vigil and hundreds of us were able to chant at them, you are not alone, we are here here, we love you and you are not alone. And they reached for us and waved. And I will tell you that it is the most heartbreaking thing I have ever seen in my life. And the fact that the Trump administration and their zero tolerance policy is allowing for thousands of children to be separated and traumatized, families to be broken apart, parents to be traumatized, is just a moral atrocity that we have to continue to fight. And that's why we were gathered there. That is why we're gonna be mobilizing back to the border on June 28th. And we're also gonna be mobilizing and taking our protests to the White House on June 30th. Hopefully hundreds of thousands of us. Yeah, I saw that that June 30th protest, which obviously there's this, the single largest one, which will be in DC, but there will be additional sort of sister protests across the country that, that people watching can take part in. We'll provide the details for that soon. So I just wanna clarify a couple of points because as a country and coming from our government officials, we can't seem to actually have official acknowledgement that these separations are happening. You are saying that in fact, they are indeed happening. They are indeed happening. And in the last couple of months since the Trump administration announced its zero tolerance policy, more than 2,000 children have been separated from their parents. And every single day that this policy continues, an average of 60 children, some as young as eight months old, torn from their mothers while breastfeeding, right, are being held as prisoners and their parents doing what every single parent does, which is do everything within your power to ensure the safety and well-being of your children are being treated as criminals. It is absolutely unconscionable and it is happening. It, it, there are so many witnesses, we talked to so many lawyers who have borne witness and who've been talking to children and parents who've been detained and it is, it is absolutely horrific, so, it is happening. Yes, and uh, so you said you've, you've talked to both uh, witnesses, there's activists at those protests, lawyers as well. For people who are watching this, that, that perhaps maybe they don't live near the border, what can they do to actually materially help these families, the individuals who have been affected by this policy? They can send money, they can donate to support all of the local organizations that are organizing and supporting families, um, doing everything from providing legal services to um, services for people once they are released, um, to actually organizing and continuing the protests. Um, and we really need people to show up in the streets and demand an end to this horrific policy. Um, and all, you can find out more information about all of these things on the Families Belong Together website. That's familiesbelongtogether.org. So look, you, you've been working for, for quite some time, literally decades organizing uh, immigrant women workers. You've been active in this area. There's been a lot of uh, what I would perceive to be false equivalents with uh, saying that this policy is not so dissimilar from how the situation was before Donald Trump. Uh, Donald Trump's administration is saying that they're simply enforcing the same law that was in effect. Many of his supporters appear to believe that these separations were happening under Barack Obama. Uh, in what ways was the policy similar and, and in what ways is it different to what we're experiencing today? Before 
family separation has been an issue, but what we're seeing right now is a massive crisis. Um, what we're seeing as a result of the zero tolerance policy is the prosecution of people who are here seeking us, who come to our borders to seek asylum. The prosecution of all of those people who are here, coming here to seek safety. And then the forced removal of their children. Now that has not happened. And so I think that anybody who tells you that this is a matter of law is completely lying. That includes the administration, they are lying. This is not law. Before the zero tolerance policy was announced, this was not the practice. So this is a direct result of a Trump administration sessions decision to institute this new practice. And that is what is separating children from their parents. That is why parents are being treated as criminals right now, period. Uh, thank you for clarifying that. There was one other, it's a, a much more specific point I want to raise. And I know that uh, the Director of Homeland Security was asked about this yesterday and wasn't able or willing to provide an answer. Um, but, but I've read that the, the facilities that we've seen, uh, the, that the media have been able to go into, are male children that have been removed from their families. And so far, it doesn't seem like anyone is able to account for the female children. Do we have any idea where those girls are ending up? There's a lot that we are not able to see and a lot of answers that we don't have. I, I, my understanding is that there was a congressional delegation that was able to see a few girls, but it's true that they're not, they're not allowing access to the public. Um, and so we have to demand answers as the public and we have to demand immediate accountability. Every single day that this policy continues, there are children being separated from their parents and those children and those parents are counting on us as Americans to act and demand answers, demand action. It's absolutely unacceptable. Well, look, and I, I certainly hope that, that more and more Americans take part in the exact sort of protests that you were involved with. Um, and I wanna give credit to both your organization, National Domestic Workers Alliance, uh, and other organizations that were involved, the ACLU, America's Voice, United We Dream, uh, the Women's Refugee Commission, and others that are, that are helping out these communities. And uh, thank you uh, for joining us today and giving us your experience from the border. Thank you so much for continuing to highlight this issue. And there's so much education to do so that people understand the cruelty of these immigration enforcement practices. We cannot allow these practices to continue. Well, thank you very much.